Greetings to Scientists, and this is Technodot here, back with more Side 3 and Knuckles. And the nostalgia, man, the nostalgia. If, if for context, the zones in this game I have the most nostalgia for are Hydrocity Zone and Mushroom Hill Zone, because they're the ones I replayed the most as a kid. Uh, I replayed Angel Island Zone a lot, too, but it was mainly Hydrocity in this zone that I played a lot as a kid, because, uh... I don't know, I just love these zones, like, this one and Hydrocity, just, they're just great. They're, I wouldn't rank either of them as the best zone in the game, I think I already gave my opinion on that a couple videos ago, but they're great zones, and we're officially in the Sonic and Knuckles department now, and I stated before that, like, as a kid, I never got fly past Flying Battery, which was the second zone in Sonic and Knuckles, but is the eighth zone here. Luckily, after playing Flying Battery in, um, in Mania, which is actually harder than it is here. Okay, I want to put out, like, some key differences with zones in Mania and here. Um, in Mania, well, this is for Sonic 2 as well, but the Mania version of Chemical Plant and Hydrocity are much easier than the Sonic 3 and Sonic 2 versions. But, the Mania version of, of Flying Battery Zone is harder than the Sonic 3 and Knuckles version. So, that's it's just a little weird how that works. I think it might have something to do with the zone order, but Flying Battery is only the third zone in Sonic Mania, so I don't fully understand why it was made a little harder. It's not harder on the... If I remember correctly, I think it's only one of the acts that are harder. And I don't remember if it's the first one or the second one. Because one of the acts is like one for one, a recreation of an act of, of I think both the acts in this game. And then the other one I think is a remixed version. I don't know if that's how it works. That's how some zones in media works. Like that's how Chemical Plant worked. That's how Green Hill worked. But... I don't remember. I don't I don't like Mania that much. I think Mania is a bit overrated, honestly. Mania to me is like the RE7. Well no, Frontiers is the RE7 of the Sonic series. And if the next game in the that if the next modern Sonic game that comes out is really good, then that will stand. Like that that statement will still stand. Especially if the next uh, modern Sonic game that comes out is good. And double, especially, if that next Modern Sonic game is a remake of some kind. Which, I don't think it's gonna be a remake, I think this is just gonna be the next mainline game. I don't know, we may get a remake, we may, I don't know. But, if we got another Sonic remake, I think they should target Unleashed Generations or the Adventure Games. Or the Riders Games. Or the Rush Games. Okay, I'm a, I'm a, well, the Rush Games... I can kind of get why they wouldn't target those, because there'd probably have to be a lot of work done to get them to work on something that isn't the DS, quite honestly, because the DS had dual screens, and they probably have to do some extra work for that. Plus, the Rush games aren't as popular as all the other ones I named, but I think the Riders games, the Adventure games, and Unleashed and Generations are all perfect candidates. And I think, in all cases, they should be remade as a duology. Hear me out here. I think this should be remade as a duology. We already got Colors Ultimate, which, granted, isn't great, but, like, we technically already got Colors, so there's no point in involving Colors in a Boost Formula remake thing. So why not just do Unleashed in Generations as a duology? That's option one. Option two would be to remake both the Adventure Games and have that as a duology, or remake Riders and Riders Zero Gravity and have that as a duology. Or if they wanted to with the Riders and Riders Zero Gravity situation, they could just remake, they could give it the Nitro Fuel treatment where they only remake Riders for the story, but all the content from Zero Gravity is there, like the, like the, uh, the tracks, the characters, uh, soundtrack and all that, like all the stuff from Zero Gravity is there just not as a story. They could do that and I'd be perfectly fine with it because as long as we get the amazing soundtrack and the ability to play as Blaze from Zero Gravity, I would not mind if they only remade 
the story version, like, of the, of, that they only remade the story version of Riders and not the story version of Zero Gravity. Like, as long as we got the tracks music and the ability to play as Blaze from Zero Gravity, I'd be fine. I'd be fine if they just, like, targeted. In my personal opinion, I do think the Nitro Fuel uh, direction is actually perfect for the Riders series for one reason. I think what they should do, right, is start it just by being a Riders remake. And then have free DLC for um, Zero Gravity tracks and music, right? But you may be wondering, what about the characters in Zero Gravity, like Blaze and Silver? What about characters who weren't playable in either games, like Vector, SBO, or um, or w even Whisper and Tangle? Like, well, that's that should be updates. That should be updates. You know, characters should be added via updates, and the tracks from tracks of music from Zero Gravity, including the main theme, Ungratify, which is what I currently use as my intro and outro. Ungr Ungratify is an amazing song. Right through gravity, like, dude. If they put Ungratify as like a optional playable song in any future Sonic game, I will be happy. I don't know if it was in Generations, but it definitely was not. It, it's definitely not in Frontiers, which is a shame. I would love like exploring the open zone with Ungratify just playing in the background. Like that'd be epic. Yeah, I kind of got stuck here. I was trying to figure out how to get back up, but it just wasn't working. Or was it really like... I don't think it was getting back up I was having trouble with. I think I was trying to cheese this area with Tails because the little thing that like twirls you wasn't working right. So I was trying to get in a position where Tails could fly me off. There's another section later where I tried this again because something was like too annoying to deal with. I forget what zone it's in, but there is a section later where I end up doing this. Oh no, it's it's Sandopolis. We do this in Sandopolis. Yep, we do this in Sandopolis. That's where I do this. I use it to cheese past like the sand trap area where the sand starts rising because I keep dying on it. You'll see what I mean when we get there, but yeah, it was Sandopolis. I had to use it there. Here, I just kind of like got impatient and just was like, fuck it, I'd rather do, do this the easy way, which didn't turn out to be the easy way, but you know, it's whatever. But in Sandopolis, I kind of almost had no choice because I was struggling to even, like, make it past the sand section, and, like, even a little bit of it, so it's like, yeah. But, anyway, in any classic Sonic game with the option, playing a Sonic and Tails is my option because I don't like being able to fly whenever I want, but I like the option of it, and Sonic is just, Sonic just feels better to control than Tails, because, uh, sometimes if you're just trying to jump on a boss as Tails, he'll just start flying randomly. I actually figured out a cool trick, I don't know if you could do this in, um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles or Sonic 2, but you could do this in Sonic Chaos, it, it, it was, a uh, or not Sonic Chaos, you could do it in Sonic Triple Trouble, which is something I ac accidentally figured out. But apparently you can start flying his tails mid-air, and now I want to test it in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Because if you could do that the whole time, then I might replay through the game as just tails and abuse that. <laughs> because I never do if you could do that this whole time, I never knew it. So I never got to like really take advantage of that. I think this might be the first boss that's like difficult this game, I want to say. Like, yeah, there's been a couple difficult ones before this. Like, there was Big Arm. It was a little hard, but like... Before this point, I don't think there's really any boss I died more than once on. And I think I died twice on this one. Obviously, any boss I died more than once or twice on, or any boss I died more than once on, I cut out pretty much all but like one or two deaths. Depending. So, obviously, you don't see how many times I died, but I died twice to this boss. If lives were still a thing, you would have seen it. This actually might be the only classic Sonic game 2 that if lives were still a thing, I think I'd be doing good on them. 
I think I would be doing good on lives if they were still a thing in this version. Uh, in other Sonic games, especially Sonic 1 and 2, definitely not. So I'll see the I'm unsure. I'm really bad at Sonic CD, but I don't know how generous it is with lives. I know that 3 and Knuckles is really generous with lives because I've played the versions that they give you lives. But I'm not sure about a um, CD. I know 2 is decent at it, at giving you lives, but I never got that far in 2, so maybe it's just because I only played the first 2 or 3 zones in that game. Okay. We are on the flying battery. This is where the game starts to become a bit of a struggle for me. Now, this, I've already, I've already mentioned that this version of flying battery, to me, is easier than the Mania version. And it's the only, I think it's the only level I've experienced both versions of, Mania and its original version, where it's harder in Mania. Because, uh, in this game, it's not too hard. It's the first zone I struggled in, but it's not too hard. I do, well, no, no, no. It's not the first zone I struggled in. I struggled in Carnival Night, but Carnival Night's just ass. This zone is just, gen is just genuinely difficult. Carnival Night is ass. Like, in Carnival Night, I blame the zone entirely. In this, I blame my own skill and say it's a hard zone. But in Carnival Night... <laughs> That was on the zone being trash. Sorry, but that, that, that's literally what it is. Carnival Night is just a trash zone. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Okay. I kind of like... In retrospect, I kind of like these obstacles. Like, obstacles like this. Because they're pretty smart when you think about it. The thing is, they're just a little difficult to get past. Yeah, I thought those guys were going to come towards me. That's why I stopped when I was spin dashing at first, because I, I, I thought I could lure them into the spin dash, but that's not how it works. I actually abused that on a boss later. You'll see what I mean. Um, luring it into the spin dash, because that's kind of the best tactic I figured out for that boss. Like, sure, there are other tactics you could do for that boss, but that one just seemed like the smartest and fastest way to deal with it without getting hit too many times. Um, I don't want to say which boss it is because spoilers, but I will at least say it's very much in the late game. I mean, we're already at the late game because we're at, we're in zone 8 out of 13. So we're in the late game already, but like, this is in the late, late game, like, within the last couple zones late game that that happens, but you'll see when we get there. I also mentioned before that there was a part in, um... Sandopolis that I have used the fact that I have tails to fly me. And you'll see what you'll still see what I mean when we get there. I think Sandopolis is the next video. It's either the next I no, it it has to be the next video, because I'm pretty sure we do I'm pretty sure I do all of um I think it's literally the next zone, and I'm pretty sure I do all of uh pretty sure I do <coughs> all the flying battery in this video, so yeah, I had to cut down flying battery a lot because uh, it took up like 30 minutes and I didn't want to like just have a 10 minute video of Mushroom Hill and nothing else. So I did cut down a lot out of uh, flying battery. Most of it was just deaths. I had so many deaths on the stage. I died a lot in Carnival Night 2, but this was the first zone where like I feel like if lives were still a thing, I would have gotten the game over. This is the first zone that I had that I'm pretty sure that would have happened. But I came close. I would have come close in Carnival Night. I won't lie. I would have came close to Carnival Night. Carnival Night, again, is just a trash ass stage. It ain't even like. The difficulty ain't even like clever, smart gameplay difficulty like Flying Battery is. It's just obnoxious. Makes you want to put the game down. <laughs> kind of shit. Luckily, I got through Carnival Night fast enough to not want to put the game down, but... Now see, there's something I wasn't noticing here. Apparently, um, I was going off which side Sonic was on when I jumped. 
but apparently you're supposed to you're supposed to hold the left stick or the D-pad, whichever one you're using, in the direction you want Sonic to go. And I did not know that. So you're gonna see me struggle for a little bit until I figure that out. I thought this whole time that you just had to jump the moment Sonic was on one side and he would be sent in that direction. The reason I had this idea is because we had an obstacle literally in the last zone in Mushroom Hill that did that, but instead of vertical, it was a, uh, instead of a vertical pole like this, it was a horizontal pole. Or not really a pole, it was a horizontal spin though. This is a vertical spin, obviously. But that was a horizontal spin back in Mushroom Hill. You know the thing I'm talking about, the thing that you're supposed to launch you up. That's how that one works. But this one doesn't work that same way. This one, you have to move the, le the left stick or D-pad in the direction you want Sonic to go, which I did not realize. Especially because if I remember correctly, I think in Mania, it does work the way the Mushroom Hill one works. But I don't know. I don't know. I haven't played Mania in a while, so... If it did work this way in Mania, then that's just my memory. My memory not remembering because it's been so long. It's been so long since you've been on. So please tell me what it is that you want to see. That's a good song, though. That's a good ass song. I kind of want to listen to it now. I'm, I might listen to it after the video, after I finish commenting up the video. But yeah, we're getting through it. <laughs> Once we get through this stage, there's only one more really hard stage after this. Honestly speaking, like, the really hard stage is to be your carnival night for bad reasons. This stage for good reasons. Like, Flying Battery, it's not my favorite zone, but I, I rank it, I think if I remember correctly, I ranked it somewhere in the middle. And that's because it gets the difficulty right. The difficulty is actually pretty fun to get through. The only thing dragging it down is just that it can get frustrating, to like Carnival Night. But the difference here is that the difficulty actually feels like fun difficulty. It doesn't feel like pain. You know, there's there's this thing I, I like to call in video games called like... There's a few things I call it. There's basically cheat deaths, where uh, a game basically has you killed by something that shouldn't have killed you for no apparent reason. Or, um when a game's difficulty suddenly spikes out of nowhere in a way that you couldn't have prepared for. That kind of stuff. That don't really happen in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, aside from, like, a couple moments in Carnival Night. Uh, so that's why, like, there's a difference, you know? Like, Crash 4 is the type of game that has good difficulty. The type of difficulty that makes you want to keep going and all that shit. <laughs> the Last of Us. <laughs> oh boy, The Last of Us has what I like to call pseudo difficulty, which causes which causes cheat deaths. What I mean by this is, I mean, oh, I don't know. Twenty minutes after you introduced one of the hardest enemies in the game, the Clickers. You have a section where you have to avoid slash kill four of them. And you just had to dealt with them in three or four consecutive encounters. Back to back before that. I'm sorry, that shit pisses me off in The Last of Us. That really fucking pisses me off. I'm still pissed at The Last of Us for that. I literally gave up on the game after that point because I got so sick and tired of fighting clickers. Like, the, it wasn't even that hard. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It wasn't even that hard. The reason I got so sick and tired of it I was just sick and tired of clickers. I was just sick and tired of seeing them, hearing them, and all that shit. The game had put them in so many combat encounters back to back, I was already sick of them. Like, it disgusted me to even hear or see them anymore. Like, it, it, oh god, the amount of clickers used at the same fucking part of the game they're introduced pretty much in The Last of Us. It's just so bad. Like, I'm not- I, I kid you not, like, it's so bad. I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but whoever it was, I hope they learned from that. And never did it again, because... 
Oh, because you're on my shit list, I'm telling you that. Whoever decided to put 75 fucking liquors in back-to-pack combat encounters, you're on my fucking shit list. I hope you know that. But yeah, I gave up on The Last of Us, never playing again. I just got so sick of clickers. I wouldn't even say clickers are like pseudo difficulty, really. They're just overused to hell and back. It's like if you took RE2 and you replaced all, like, half the zombies with lickers. That's exactly what it's like. If you took RE2 and replaced half the zombies with lickers, that's basic, that basically sums up that whole section of The Last of Us. That basically sums up that whole section. No, not even RE2. You know the abundance of enemies in RE, RE4? Take RE4 and replace half the Ganados with Chainsaw Guys. There we go. That's more accurate. That is way more accurate. Because you can avoid a liquor one-hit kill. But Chainsaw Guys and um, Clickers both are much harder to avoid that with. Damn, we having some shit go down right now. Those are not much fun, but seeing how much of the videos left, I'm guessing I had an easier time on this active zone because that's what it's looking like. Oh, I gotta be careful too because this will cause crush deaths. Luckily, I think Past Me noticed that off the bat because Past Me is moving off them from the very beginning. Like, past me's movie off film the moment he first sees them from video footage is what I'm saying. So I apparently knew that knew they would crush me already, so. I mean it's kinda of obvious they would. Crush deaths are so dumb in Sonic games. I kinda of just wish instead of like uh crushing you, they just made you lose some rings and bounced you back out of the area you got crushed in. That's how Sonic Heroes works. Why can't it work here? Oh yeah, this part. Oh, I gotta get this kind of... There we go. That would that would have not been doable without a spin dash, I'm telling you. The spin dash and having Tails by my side saves my ass so many times in this game and in Sonic 2. Like, you have no idea. Hell, the main thing I use spin, the spin dash for is the time stuff like that, stuff that would crush me. Because I used it in Marble Garden, I used it here, and I know I use it later, I just don't remember which zone it's, I use it later in. But I do use it to avoid crush deaths a lot, because it's a really smart way of doing that, when you think about it. Plus it puts the spin dash to use, because honestly I wouldn't use the spin dash much if it wasn't for loops like this. And, you know, moments where I could be crushed to death if I'm not fast enough. These things kind of remind me of, uh, Babylon, or... Ugh, I got crushed anyway! Motherfucker. But those things kind of remind me of Sky Babylon from Sonic uh, Rush Adventure a little bit. I don't know why, but these, these, like, these little towers you just kind of ride the way up and down on. Kind of remind me of um, Sky Babylon from Sonic Rush Adventure a little bit, and I couldn't really tell you why. Oh, I know why. I know why. It's like that little um, little drill-like parts that you run down on. I think up in one location, but yeah, same ones used in um, in Sky Sanctuary and Sonic Generations. That's just something interesting. Sky Sanctuary and Sonic Generations, after playing like Sonic Rush Adventure again and playing through this game, I noticed that like some things from Sonic Rush Adventure and from this game, outside of Sky Sanctuary itself, were borrowed and put into Sky Sanctuary in Sonic Generations, which makes sense because there's not much of a zone in Sky Sanctuary outside of like the several bosses you have to face in that zone. Between bosses, you just kind of get like short platforming sections and that's kind of it. 
Like, I don't get the hype for Sky Sanctuary. It's a pretty short, like, boss rush, basically, with little platforming sections in between. Ooh, yeah, this part is, this part's a tough one. We gotta get this. I'm just gonna wait, because there, there was no way I was gonna spin dash up after that. Okay, now I can- I don't have to move anymore because this is gonna slide me against the wall. This boss though, this boss- this boss ain't that hard. I won't lie, after the boss we faced at the end of Mushroom Hill and the boss we faced in the last act, this boss is comparable- comparatively easier than those two. I hope I said that right. You know what word I'm trying to say, and I know how to spell the word and everything, I just never say it verbally. There's like a lot of like words that I use a lot in text, but I don't really use verbally a lot, because when I'm when I'm typing stuff in text or writing stuff, I'm very verbose, but when I'm talking, I try to like casualize my speech a little bit more, because I don't want to be annoying basically <laughs> but yeah I'm going to be ending off the video here bye